So tonight we're in uh, Acts 2.42, back to Acts 2.42, um, and we've, I think last week we finished um, the doctrines, um, Acts 2.42 says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines, and we, we went and looked at six of the foundational doctrines of the church that are listed in Hebrews chapter 6. And so now we go back to Acts 2.42 and continue with the theme for our church for 2019, which is doing life together. And these four components of what every church should have engrafted in um, is listed here in Acts 2.42, these four things. The apostles' doctrines that we know what we believe and I've been seeking to encourage you to know what we believe as a church so nobody can come and tell you that what your church teaches is wrong because you know what your church teaches. Amen. Praise and glory to God. Amen. Fellowship is the second thing, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I... Um, the definition of the word fellowship is the Greek word koinonia, K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. I don't expect you to write that down. You don't need to. But here's what you need to write. Well, here's what you do need to write down is that it means to share. It means you're a part of a community. Uh, it means joint participation. Jointly contributing to have things in common. It means we're on the same page, headed in the same direction working together, living life together. And when I thought about this <clears throat> particular point, <clears throat> there's some things in our church that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm okay, I'm all right. <laughs> my wife's about to come and grab the water and throw it down my throat. Um, the reality is, if you're really connected with our church and involved, our church does this well. Matter of fact, we do it a little bit too well. Uh, when, if you're really uh, engaged in the life of our church um, and involved, um, if you get sick or you die or somebody in your family dies, our church will kill you with kindness. Amen. Yeah, they will. Uh, I, I've had more than one person say, Pastor, can you tell the people to slow down a little bit? Because we overwhelm people. Um, and that's good. I'd rather have that problem than the problem of not having people engaged in doing it. Yeah. Uh, and, and if anybody complains about they had some kind of sickness or condition, or a death, and nobody came to their rescue, and they're members of the First Baptist Church with Norton, it generally means they were not actively engaged. Yeah, that's what it generally means, because if you're engaged, it's just the spirit. This is not something I bought here. This was the way the First Baptist Church of Glenarden was long before I got here. Uh, I grew up in this church, and this is the kind of church it is. It's just the spirit of the church that we genuinely care for each other. We care about each other. And that's what this is about, is that we're sharing life together. And then, matter of fact, let's look at Acts 2.42. These people care, care so much. Acts 2, I want to go past verse 42. I want to look at some of these other verses here uh, that's mentioned here in, Act, in, in this uh, particular passage. Um, I didn't give this to the, book, to the um, AV people, so they won't have it uh, in, initially. Uh, it says, let me read, starting at verse 42, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayers. Verse 43, then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, verse 44, and all who believed were together, say together, together. and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all has everyone, has anyone had need? Uh, 
we're, we're for being in we're, we're, we're for being in communion and community but we ain't for it that much we ain't gonna sell all of our goods and give it to the church and share it among ourselves see ain't nobody say nothing on that <laughs> but wouldn't it be great uh, I was thinking about this today because in the community where I live it's just a small number of houses I think there's 30 houses on the street and several of the people who live on the street are members of our church. And I thought to myself, what if we could make this whole street First Baptist Boulevard? You know what I'm saying? If we could make everybody. And I thought about if, if we really got unified and together and we didn't, uh, we worked together and shared life together then everybody wouldn't have to have their own car. Everybody wouldn't have to have their own lawnmower. Everybody wouldn't have to have... <laughs> okay, all right, let me leave that alone. <laughs> I just thought I would throw that out there for a minute. But that's what these people did. They shared life together. Somebody needed a ride, they gave them a ride. I mean, they didn't have cars back then, but this is what shit... They, you, you, you know, they picked them up on the donkey. I... I um, I was, when I was growing up in church, um, and I went to this revival one time, the guy was testifying, and he was talking about how he um, went and picked up somebody to take him to church on the Metro bus. <laughs> in other words, he didn't have a car, so he stopped by, he rode the bus, picked him up, and took them on the Metro, and took him to church. I mean, you use what you have. We laughed. We laughed at him. We la I mean, we was rolling on the floor laughing at him. But, I mean, you use what you have. That's what it's about. It's, it's, it's about enough care and concern for each other that you sacrifice your own personal benefit to be able to be a blessing to somebody else. And, and that's what fellowship is about. It, it means that there's more than one fellow on the ship. There's more than one person in this game. And it's not about what makes me happy. See, what, what tears the church apart? I'm, I'm going to just preach, off, preach here for a minute, then I'm going to get on to the lesson here. Um, what tears the church up is people are so focused about what they want. And what, what satisfies them and what makes them happy, what they like and what they don't like. Most of the letters that I get that are critical are letters of people who, something we do that they don't like, that they want to see changed. And I've made a decision that I'm going to always side on doing what's in the best interest of everybody as opposed to just one or two people. Amen. Amen. So I want to uh, applaud these people. Um, matter of fact, verse, I didn't, let me read verse 46. And so they can, they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now here's the deal. Here's what Jesus said one time in John. He said, by this shall men know that you are my disciples, not because you speak in tongues, not because you shout, not because you run around the building, but because of the demonstrated love that you show one toward another. That's the thing that God breathes upon in such a profound way. That we deeply care for each other, that we make sacrifices. Amen. We care about each other, that we'll go out of our way. If I need to drive to Baltimore to pick you up and bring you to church. <laughs> Y'all are funny, ain't nobody say amen. Elder, not a single person say amen, not one person. And you wonder why God won't give you a new car. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it's about. It's about, if I can't get you, I'll make sure you get God. Amen. And that's what we're called to do. So that's what this fellowship is about. It's about us getting engaged with each other in life. 
It is about us sharing life together. And that's, that's the thing that we've been promoting and pushing. And that's what they did. And matter of fact, in verse 46, it says in verse 46, so continuing daily with one accord. They did it every day. We might do it weekly or monthly. We might pick up somebody um, for the, our monthly meeting and maybe for church on Sunday or Tuesday. But they did it every day. Daily continued. They continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor. And the Lord added to the church daily. And, and that's because the people saw the love that they had for one another and the care they had for one another. And that's what... The Lord is calling us to do. Here's the deal. Y'all forgive me. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get to the lesson in a minute. But I just need to just talk to y'all. This is my heart. God never called for us to live our lives in an isolated way. If you, if you come to church and sit on the back row and as soon as the church is over, you, you buzz out. You are not operating in the context of what Christ wants us to operate with. I know, I know that people get on your nerves. <laughs> I, know, I know you're a loner, and I know you don't want to get hurt again. Somebody hurt you and bruised you. But one bad apple don't spoil a whole bunch. You have gifts and talents and anointings and giftings in your life that God wants to use to help make his kingdom better. But if you just come in and sit on the back row and, and buzz out soon as church is over and don't engage with other people and share with other people and love with other people and live life with other people, you're missing out on what God's intention, go on and preach, Pastor, the intention that God has for the kingdom. And this is what we have to be about. This is what we have to be about. This is the thing I'm trying to drive home to us that this is what God has called us to do. We are family. Amen. I don't remember the rest of the words to the song. Huh? I got all my sisters with me. Who sings that? Sister Sledge. Sister Sledge. Hey, we're family. And we have to look and care for each other. So let me just go through these verses I have. But that's, that's the deal. My whole point I'm trying to drive home today, and I, and I did on the Sunday that I preached about this, is um, I shared with you all that Sunday, I don't know if you was here, um, that you live longer when you are engaged with other people. That was the bottom line, that there's some statistics that show, and I, I pointed out a village um, that... Uh, people lived past 100 years of age and they were able to do that because they were engaged in life with other people. And I believe that's God, what God wants us to do uh, is live with other people. And so um, having said that, let me, let me go on through this real quick. We are, we are called by the Lord Jesus to live in fellowship with each other. That's what the Lord calls us to do. Um, that's the will of God. It is the clear, absolute teaching of the word of God that we are called to live uh, in fellowship with each other. That is not God's will for you to be separated from other people. Um, and the reason commune is important, and um, we'll talk about this next time too, but the reason commune is important because that's the time to examine whether you are in right fellowship with other people. And it's so important to God, to the Lord, that he said, um, I want you to discern the Lord's body. That's what the whole communion thing is about, that you're discerning the Lord's body. And that word discerning the Lord's body uh, has to do with that you've discerned that somebody that you're in relationship with, that you have shown them a level of love and respect. Uh, he says, if you, if, you, if you don't bring resolution with other people, uh, that communion table is supposed to tell you you need to go and get it right. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. 
It says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Somebody say, speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Look at your neighbor, say, we need to be joined together. That's what we are called to be and to do. This is, this, is the, this is the instructions from the Lord. This is what we, we are commanded to do. We're called by Christ to live in, in koinonia with each other, to share life with one another. To share life with one another. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. It says, we are one body, it says. We are one body. First Corinthians 12, verses 25 through 27. Let's, can we slide back to verse 23? Let me see if they can go to verse 23. I want to start at verse 23. Maybe we should go back to verse 12. I want to go back to verse 12. They may not, just give them a minute, they'll find it. Let me just start at verse, let me go to 12 to 27, and I should have just put it down here when I first did this, and I call myself shorting this thing up, but I got plenty of time, because I don't have a lot of verses today to share or, or anything. It's a very simple message. Let me go to verse 12, uh, and go from 12 to, through 27. They, they're not going to have it up there. I didn't give it to them. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, <clears throat> being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact the body is not one me member, but many. Verse 13, 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Say that. There are many members, yet one body. And I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No. Much rather... Those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Look at your neighbor and say, you necessary. necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God will compose the body having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all of the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. What, that's, so, that's the way God wants us to function and be. Thank all um, the 17 parts of y'all that celebrated that point. That, that is the deal. We, all, we need each other. I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's family, the song says. I cannot be everything God wants me to be by myself, isolated. So everybody plays a part. Everybody plays a role. Everybody has a contribution to make. No matter how small it is, it's important. You got... You got 10 toes. 
And without those toes, you would walk differently than the way you walk. Look at your neighbors. I wonder if you're a toe or a hand. You can look at them. Say. Look at the other side. Say, I wonder, do you smell like my feet smell? Look at them. Say. Every, every part of the body has a role to play, and we ought to care for each part of the body. You can't reject. And, you know, as I've grown up in church, I've seen people just reject other people. Uh, or I've heard people say, I ain't got time for that foolishness. And I, and I think about the fact that all of us at some point in our lives have foolishness. Yeah. That, that God tolerated. That God patiently waited for you to get yourself together and worked with you and, and encouraged you and delivered you God worked to get you where you are today. And by the way, in case you don't know, look at your neighbor. You still ain't where you're going to go. You haven't gotten there yet. And wherever you is, God's tolerating your stuff too right now. You ain't perfect. You don't dot every eye. You don't cross every T. You ain't got it all together. And yet God still woke your nasty by yourself up this morning gave you the activities of your limbs and protected you and used you and blessed you even though you ain't where you're supposed to be you ain't got everything together yet and yet he still chose to wake you up I don't, that's why we can all worship God no matter where you are you give him praise because he's expressed and shown you mercy regardless of where you are <laughs> let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 make every part make every effort to keep the body keep in unity the scripture says let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 2 through 4 and it says with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. We're gonna see that term again, bearing with one another. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called and one hope of your calling. The key I want you to see that we have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Do what we have to do to keep the peace. That's the call of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. It talks about living in harmony. Somebody say live in harmony. Yeah. Romans 12 verse 16. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. I love that verse. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Hallelujah. While we're here, let me just read verse 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 and 21 while I'm here. Since we already turned there, let's go ahead and read it. Uh, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, Live peaceably with all men. <clears throat> Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. 
I try to tell y'all all the time, don't try to pay nobody back. If you try to pay them back, God says, oh, I see you got this. The scripture's telling us, keep your hands off and let God pay them back. Because when God pay them back, they ain't going to do it again. Therefore, verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. If, for in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not become overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's how you know you belong to Jesus. He gives you the power to overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. I give God the praise that he's a God that can give us the power to be everything he's called us to be. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verses... Um, I got verse 2, but I, I think I'm going to talk about verse 1, too. I don't know why I just cut so many of these verses out. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Uh, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Let me stop. Let me, can I stop and just talk about this verse for a minute? If, you, if a person is overtaken in a, in a trespass, in a sin, if you are spiritual, the goal is restoration. Amen. The unfortunate thing is that a lot, a lot of churches and a lot of organizations don't want to restore. They want to penalize people. But the Bible says the goal is to restore in the spirit of gentleness and consider how you want to be treated if you fail from the same temptation. Amen. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, tell the truth. Say, look at him and tell the truth. You did the same thing, you just ain't get caught. Go ahead, tell him. You did the same thing. You did it. You, you got away. They didn't catch you. They didn't have a video camera in the room when you did it. Please run around when you did it. Yeah. I remember one time I was, I was taking my son to... Uh, basketball practice one of my kids and I pulled out on Central Avenue and we was late and I'm I'm trying to get him to practice on time and when I came up came out on three on two on the 301 214 and put the pedal to the metal the man was standing right there <laughs> and pointed at me oh you know you get that feeling when they point at you <laughs> And pulled me over. Yeah. Came back to the car, got my license, registration. So I'm sitting there waiting on him to come back. I'm late now, I'm super late. <laughs> and I start thinking, there was other cars on this highway. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how he know it was my car that was speeding? <laughs> So I said, I'm going to challenge him when he comes back. So I saw him getting out of the car. So I'm getting my thoughts in my mind. I'm going to challenge him. So he's coming back to the car. And then some said, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so he comes back to the car. Now, you know that, you know, people speed and so many people get killed, blah, blah, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> then he said three words that changed my life forever. Now, Pastor Jenkins. He said, I got your sermons in my car right now. I'm listening to them. I'll put my head down. Because <laughs> I was guilty. And he only gave me a warning. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Let me roll on. OK, 
Okay. Uh, let's go to. So, oh, oh, that point was caring for one another. I, I didn't even, did I read verse 2? I didn't even get down to verse 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Verse 2, Galatians 6 2. Bear one another's burdens. We're called to bear with each other, be patient with each other, learn to tolerate each other, just like God tolerates you. It's bothersome for people who have no patience with other people as if you've always been there, that you've arrived. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse This just repeats what we've been saying all evening so far. It just, it just highlights and uh, brings it back to the light, what we've already said, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Bear one another and forgive one another. Now, Having said that, I want to rehearse with you tonight what I, I think I covered this at, on a Sunday. And I want to go back through it, but this time I'm going to give you some scripture verses. And that, that has to do with how we deal with each other when you, when you get offended by somebody. Because the Bible is crystal clear, Matthew um, uh, 18, I should have put that down here too, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 for a minute. Um, this is what people don't want to do. I didn't get this to them either. You've heard me talk about this many times. Moreover, verse 15, Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Say that again, between you and him alone. Is that what y'all do? No. What do you do? You, you talk to other people about it. And I'm trying to teach you all that that's a sin. It's a sin for you to do it, and it's a sin for you to listen to it. I don't let people bring stuff like that to me. My first question, when I see you going down that road, you about to talk about somebody, my first question is, have you talked to that joke, or that person about it? Because the scripture says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained your brother. If he will not hear you, verse 16, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, and the reason they go is to be a witness that you did it, not to gang up on the person. There to go to be a witness that every word may be established, that you've made an effort to make it straight. And if he refuses to hear, then tell it to the church. Then bring it to the pastor. Don't come to the church when you, you haven't followed verse 15 and 16. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let, it, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. That's the, that's, the, that's the plain teaching of scripture. But we don't do it. And the question is why? I've been preaching this at this church for 30 years, and people still don't do it. Look at your neighbor. Say, why don't you do it? Go ahead, ask him. Wait for an answer. Why do you go and talk to everybody else about it? Then they pick up an offense. They get mad at the person, and the person ain't done nothing to them just because because you upset and they hurt you, now they up mad at them. And it's, it's, it's a problem. And so the scripture is clear what you should do. And the reason people don't do it is they don't know how. And here's what I've been trying to teach people to do is you go to the person and we use the SBI model. Let me give it to you again. The S stands for situation. You clearly identify what the situation was when the offense occurred. When did it happen? 
That means you don't go to a person and say, you always. You never. You don't say that. Take that out of your vocabulary. You, you, you identify the specific situation. And then the B stands for behavior. What did they do? What did you see? What did you hear? It's behavior specific. Put an asterisk, a star, highlight, underline, draw a circle, put a square, whatever you need to do to highlight this point. You identify behavior. <clears throat> I guess I do need some water, don't I? Talk among yourselves. I'm going to take a hit right here for just a second. <laughs> You don't talk about intentions. You don't talk about motives. You don't have the gift to look into a person's heart. Nobody has the gifting to look into a person's heart. Jot that down underneath behavior. Not motives, not intentions, not why you think they did it. <clears throat> all you can address is the behavior. And that's all you should address is behavior. You let God deal with, deal with their motives and intentions. You, you speak to the behavior. Now what you can say, the I for in SBI stands for impact. Here is the impact of that behavior. Here's the consequences. Here's how it affected me. Here's how it affected the ministry. Here's, here's, the, here's the consequences or the impact of that behavior. That's how you give feedback. That's how you talk to somebody. That, and and the, the reason I'm talking about this with you all today is because churches can grow, but they, 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 people come in the front door, but they go out the back door. And the reason they go out the back door is because some joker in the church has hurt, hurt them. And they walk out the church and put a, a blame on the entire church because one joker did something to them. when the whole church is not guilty. Or maybe two or three people did it to you. And here's what, I, here's what I know. At some point in your Christian journey, listen to this, at some point in your Christian journey, somebody is going to piss it you off. That's a biblical term. Look it up in the King James Concordance. It's a biblical word. Somebody's going to hurt you. Somebody's going to upset you. It's a part of life. And you got to learn at some point in your journey how to deal when somebody offends you. It's a part of the growth, spiritual growth. That you're going to have to go through it. You have to go through something happening that somebody treated you wrong. And so you might as well go ahead and learn the lesson. Because here's the deal. If you don't learn it right and you just get mad, get bitter, lead a church, then you're going to lead a church and then you're going to go to work and somebody do a job going to do the same thing. Yeah, but I bet you will see. I bet you will keep going to work if you like to eat. <laughs> so it's a part of the spiritual development. And some of you keep going back through the same thing again because you haven't learned. God's trying to teach you a lesson. Here's what I learned about God. I learned this about God. I learned that God will keep you going around in circles until you learn the thing he wants you to learn before he promotes you to the next place. So I want to learn what I need to learn now so I don't have to come back to the first grade again. I want to learn the lesson now so I don't have to get hurt again. I want to learn the lesson now so I don't have to go back through this drama again. But some of you haven't gotten that. And you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. Keep doing the same thing over and over again. God wants you to learn something. Then, yep, yep, people are going to upset you. It goes, it's a part of life. It goes with the territory. Don't be shocked. Don't be disappointed. Don't be upset. It's a part of life. Let God teach you to love the hell out of people who didn't treat you with the same love that you have the capacity to give to them. Now, SBI, that's the SBI deal. Now, when somebody comes to you, And they want to talk about a situation with you. How do you respond? Here's number one. 
it's, this is the, the lover, L-U-V-A-A. -A. If you want to write that down in your list, I did this already, but I'm, I'm going through it again. I'm trying to drive it home with scriptures now. I'm going to give this lover with scriptures. So, so the first thing is to listen. Somebody say listen. Um, James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of, of God. You're arguing and fussing and fighting and going off and giving people a piece of your mind is not going to change a person's behavior. I think verse 19 is interesting because it says we should be quick to hear. We should be swift to hear. God gave you two ears and one mouth. Whew, Lord, if God had given some of y'all two mouths. Woo! Come on, let's give God praise. No, ain't nobody got no two mouths that we know about. Bless his name, praise his name, glory. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Be, listen, you, you're not listening if you are thinking of an answer while they're talking. Let me let that sink in for a moment. This is even true. This is true across the board, not just in relationships, but in marriage and work and church, it's true. People don't know how to listen. Uh, one of the techniques of showing that you know how to listen is that before you respond, you repeat back to the person what you heard them say in your words. Uh, we had a deacon in our church. I'm going to put him on blast right now. He and his wife was talking. And when she finished talking, she said to him, you don't, you, don't listen, you don't ever listen to anything I say. He said, I heard everything you say. She said, what did I say? <laughs> he said, you said, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> They're no longer married. I just thought I'd throw it out at you. <laughs> listen. Somebody look at your neighbor. Say, listen. listen. And then understand. The L U V A A, the U understand. The lover, the U and lover stands for understand. Make an effort to comprehend what the other person is saying. Not just repeating their words, but what is the heart of their issues. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, 19, 12, 14, 19, 14, 29, he who is slow to wrath has great understanding. Slow to get angry, slow to uh, respond, has great understanding. Um, well, I, and I'm, I'm, God knows I'm guilty of this. My wife um, one time got my attention when she took the um, jewelry box that I bought her. It was a nice, expensive jewelry box. And she was so upset with me, she threw it out the window. Oh, by the way, the window was closed. was at that point that I realized we had a problem. <laughs> yeah. 
See, because for, for a man, everything's okay as long as the cookie jar is open. Y'all can't handle the truth. Let me leave that alone. Let's go to Proverbs. Let me leave it alone. Let me go to Proverbs 20, 17, 27. Huh? huh? I'm listening. What do you want me to say? Hold on, hold on. Let me give you the mic because cause I'm listening. Stand up. If you're going to talk, stand up and tell them what you want to tell them. I, I was just saying maybe if we could talk a little bit about why the jury box went through the window. <laughs> it may help some other couples and other people. I'm not sure why the jury box went out the window. <laughs> Go ahead, tell them why, why did the expensive jury box that I paid good money for Go out the window with the jury in it. Go ahead, explain it. <laughs> and the window closed. Yeah, the window was closed. Well, I think sometimes. And then I had to explain, try to explain to the window repair man what happened. <laughs> well, I think sometimes with when people are trying to um, receive feedback, when a person genuinely keeps, you know, going, trying to get feedback, how can we work through this, but they constantly feel unheard, at some point they just lose it. That's why it's so important yeah, to yeah. understand. I, I agree. That's my whole point. Yeah. I, I'm not taking that away. I, I wasn't hearing. I wasn't understanding. Good. And I, and I Say said, that again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be trying to get nice with me now. <laughs> After the jury box is thrown out the window. <laughs> yeah, with the jury in it. Yeah. No, that's my point is that I realized we had a problem. It's not that you had not tried to communicate. I had not been listening. And it becomes very important to listen. Okay, I gotta hurry up, y'all. Let me, I see some of y'all talking to me, trying to tell me some other things. Uh, I'm trying to hurry up because I'm trying to do better on my time. Proverbs 17, 27 says, he who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. So my thing is to tell you to seek to understand first, then be understood. Seek to understand first. Seek to see what the other person is saying. Understand their point. Then be understood. It's not so, you know, I, I talk to people and they're so anxious to make their point known. They're so anxious to do that when they're not making any effort to understand what the other person's point is. So I think that's important. So um, listen, understand, and then, y'all got that? Okay. Um, the first, the V is for validate. This is, I cannot tell y'all how important this point is is to validate a person's feelings and status. You don't have to agree with it. Doesn't mean that you have to like it. It doesn't mean that you have to go along with it. But validate it, that it's, you understand why they, what they feel, or, or you, you acknowledge it. It's, it's, it's really about acknowledging their feelings. Matthew chapter 5, 25 says, agree with your adversary quickly. Be quick to just acknowledge their, their point of view. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to like it. I don't even think it's right. But what, but what I'm validating is that you feel that way. And I heard you. That's very, very important. And most people don't know how to do that. Jesus gave us the key. 
Agree with your adversary quickly. When you reach that point of tension, agree with them. Validate their feelings. And then, James uh, 5.16, his A, apologize. Apologize. Confess your trespasses to one another. Apologize. And by the way, apologize doesn't mean that you say, if I hurt you. Take ownership. The way you apologize, write this down. You say, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? That's the appropriate way to apologize to somebody. Not if I did or I'm, I apologize or even, or even I'm sorry. Take ownership. And you get a release from the person. I acknowledge I did wrong. I take ownership for it. Will you forgive me? Take ownership. That's the key to an apology is you take ownership for the part you played. And let me close with uh, amend or make a change of actions. And that verse is not right. I'm going to have to find the right verse for you all because I, I gave the wrong verse. So don't write that verse down. That's not the right verse. I think it's actually chapter 5, verse 23 through 24. It's what I think it should be. Let me see if that's it. I think that's what it should be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 5, 21 through 23. I didn't, I gave that, I put that in wrong. My apologies on that. Um, and it says in chapter 5, verses 23 through 25. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So, go and make it right. What that means is whatever I have to do to make it right, make it right. Y'all heard me talk about this, I talked about this uh, a few, uh, couple Sundays ago. I, it's struggling to me that so many people let money separate families and friendships. Money is just not, you can, I, can get, I can earn some more money. You can get more money. And as children of God, we have to not let issues separate us. We, we have to bring reconciliation and do what it takes. So many people are divided based on money. And it's, it's a troubling thing. It's very troubling, very troubling to me. It's just, I ain't that hungry for money. If, 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 if you keeping the money or me giving you money is going to bring the peace, I'll do whatever it takes to keep the peace. Because I know if I do right, God will give it back to me, press down, shaking together. Right? Okay. I got to stop. Let me see if there are any questions. Come quickly because I'm trying to do better on my time so we can spend some time in prayer and lay hands on some of you jokers, get you loosed and bound from your issues and concerns. So let me just take a few questions real quick. Okay, yes, ma'am. I actually just want to thank the church. You spoke on a couple of things, and I want to thank the church. So I didn't tell a lot of people, but my family has had three deaths since October. My aunt almost was 102, she passed away. My cousin Adrian was 47, and then my younger cousin Zane was in his 30s. Um, when my aunt and my cousin passed away, um, the card ministry started sending me a bunch of cards, and it really helped me to deal with the grief that I was experiencing. Um, so I wanna thank the church for that. When my cousin Zane passed away, his mother lives in Philadelphia. I gave the church her address, and I talked to her yesterday, and she said, what's the name of your church again? 
And I told her, and she said, I've been receiving so many cards from them, and they have been lifting my spirits. And she's, you know, she likes to write, so I knew that she would appreciate cards. So she wanted me to tell you guys thank you. Her name is Diane. I also want to thank a couple of members who small acts of kindness really helped me, and they had no idea what I was going through. Two of them are sitting up there, Kiara and John and Maya Solomon and Tina Saunders. I don't know if they're here or not, but all of these people went out of their way to be kind to me, and they didn't even know what I was going through. So I just want to thank them. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. I just have, uh, I guess I really shouldn't have a request, but it's, my wife is suffering with, uh, I guess what you call it, dementia. And uh, I don't know how to handle it. So I guess really what I'm asking you to do is just to pray for me that I know how to deal with this because it's really something new that I'm going through. All righty, we'll, we'll pray. We'll be praying in just a few moments. Anybody want to join the First Baptist Church, Glen Arden? Right now would be the right time to come. If you want to get saved, rededicate, or reassurance or you're saved already but you don't have a church, right now will be the time to come. Does anybody fall in that category? Anybody? Anybody? Just get on up. Come on down here right now. We'd be glad to take you. Nobody? All right. Praise the Lord. Oh, um, are you standing to come? You are? Okay. Bring your stuff. Bring your stuff. Father, thank you for this couple. I pray you plant them in your vineyard. Strengthen them on every side. Let your perfect will be accomplished through their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with them. Take care.